Hello and welcome to Advanced Remote Sensing. Advanced Remote Sensing is brought to you by Advanced Remote Sensing Society from Kirkuk. Today we will talk about Advanced Machine Learning for Remote Sensing. I am Shaheen Al Hirmzi, Radar and Optical Remote Sensing Expert, also GIS Analyst. In recent years, machine learning methods play an essential role in the data analysis of remote sensing including image classification, image segmentation, registration and fusion, target detection, information retrieval, etc. Researchers are now beginning to adapt advanced modern machine learning and pattern recognition techniques such as manifold learning, sparse representation, low rank representation, comparative sensing and deep learning to solve related problems in the complex remote sensing data. As we know, the classic remote sensing techniques and the methods are too limited and not suitable for complex environmental applications like global climate change. In many modern applications, to drive a model or classifier from extremely large data, it is usually a burden to our classic algorithm because modern sets consist of a large number of data and multidimensional. If you want to analyze image, we need to convert it into a form that can be used by machine learning algorithms. This process is called feature extraction. If you want to keep the feature set simple, then it is bound to have low dimensionality. While this is good from a complexity point of view, the feature set may not be unique and distinct. Perhaps the most popular classic algorithm for dimension, dimensionality reduction is principal common analysis PCA. Given a data set, PCA finds the direction along which the data has maximum variance in addition to the relative importance of these directions. But PCA is most useful in the case when data lies on or close to a linear subspace of the data set. For example, in modern application, we deal with complex multidimensional data, not linear. In this case, if we, if we used PCA, the two vectors that span the plane will be given a positive weight, but the another vector will have weight of zero. Since the data does not vary along these directions, therefore we must utilize advanced machine learning algorithms like manifold learning. What does mean manifold learning mathematically? Manifold learning is one of advanced modern machine learning techniques which has been used by researchers in the field of computer vision and data mining but recently remote sensing researchers are now beginning to adapt it for solving the complex remote sensing data. Manifold learning is a popular recent approach to non-linear dimensionality reduction. Algorithms for this task are based on the idea that the dimensionality of many data sets is only artificially high so each data point consists of perhaps thousands of features it may be considered as a function of only a few underlying parameters that is the data points are actually sampled from a low dimensional manifold 
that is embedded, embedded in a high dimensional space. As we know, the accuracy of the training algorithms is directly proportional to the amount of data we have. So most modern data set often consists of a large number of examples, each of which is made up of many features. Having access to a lot of examples is very useful in extracting a good model from the data. But managing a large number of features is usually a burden to our algorithms. The thing is that some of these features may be irrelevant, so it is important to make sure the final model doesn't get affected by this. If the feature sets are complex, then our algorithm will be slowed down and it will be very difficult to find the global optimum. Given this situation, a good way to approach it would be to reduce the number of features we have. But if we do that in a careless manner, we might end up losing information. We want to reduce the number of features while retaining the maximum amount of information. Now, what does it have to do with manifold learning? Why do we care about reducing the dimensionality of our data? First of all, what is dimensionality? Dimensionality refers to the minimum number of coordinates needed to specify any point within a space or an object. So, a line has a dimensionality of 1 because only one coordinate is needed to specify a point on it. If we consider the number line, you can just pick a number and you'll know where it is. A planner service, on the other hand, has a dimensionality of 2 because two coordinates are needed to specify a point on it. So, trying to locate 5 on a service is meaningless because you need to specify the other coordinate too. To give a fairly rudimentary example, let's consider a classroom to identify someone uniquely. You need both the first name and the last name, sometimes the first name and the last name of two students can be the same. So we may want to we may want the middle name as well. So the dimensionality for this case can be considered three. What dimensionality what is dimensionality reduction? The reason we are discussing this is because every form of data has to be converted to a feature set before we analyze it. As in if you want to analyze images, we need to convert it into a form that can be used by machine learning algorithms. This process is called feature extraction. If you want to keep the feature set simple, then it is bound to have low dimensionality. Why this is good from a complexity point of view, the feature set may not be unique and distinct. In our earlier example, it is like picking only the first name. You will not be able to uniquely identify everybody in the class. On the other hand, if you keep the dimensionality high, it will be nice and uniquely, but it may not be easy to analyze because of complexity involved. Apart from simplifying data, dimensionality reduction has other uses as well. Let's consider the visualization process of a minute hair. If the data lies in a 100 dimensional space, we cannot get an intuitive feel for what the data look like. We can barely manage to imagine the fourth dimension, let alone visualizing the 100th 
However, if a meaningful two or three dimensional representation of the data can be found, then it is possible to visualize it. So, this may seem like a trivial point. Many statistical and machine learning algorithms have very poor optimal optimality guarantees. So, the ability to actually see the data and output of an algorithm is of great practical interest. How do we reduce the dimensionality? There are many approaches to dimensionality reduction based on a variety of assumptions. We will focus on an approach based on observation that high dimensional data is often much simpler than the dimensionality would indicate. If you consider our classroom example, somebody may come up with a 50, 50 dimensional feature to uniquely identify each student. The feature set can include name, address, age, weight, height, etc. While it may serve our purpose, the data distribution will end up being very complex. A given high dimensional data set may contain many features that are all measurements of the same underlying curve. Hence, they are closely related to each other. For example, this can happen when you are taking video footage of a single object from multiple angles simultaneously, as you can imagine. There will be a lot of overlap in the information captured by all those cameras. Keeping all that data would be redundant and would only serve to slow down our system. It would be helpful to get a simplified and non-overlapping representation of the data, whose features can be identified with the underlying parameters that govern the data. The intuition in the previous paragraph is formalized using the notation of manifold. The data set lies along a low dimensional manifold embedded in a high dimensional space, where the low dimensional space reflects the underlying parameters and high dimensional space is the Peter space. Attempting to uncover this manifold structure in a data set is referred to as manifold learning. Manifold learning is nonlinear dimensionality reduction technique. So, in order to discuss that, we need to understand what line linear dimensionality detection is. What exactly is manifold learning? It would be wired to go through this entire post and not know what manifold means. A manifold is an extremely important concept in mathematics. In layman's terms, you can think of it as a service of any shape. It doesn't necessarily have to be a plane, etc. It can be shaped like a folded sheet with all the curves. This is generalized to n dimensions and formalized as manifold in mathematics. If you are interested, you can just google it and read more about it. There are a lot of call visualization avail available on the web. We are now ready to discuss manifold learning. The manifold learning algorithms can be viewed as the nonlinear version of principal component analysis. We have discussed the importance of dimensionality reduction. If you think about approaches like principal component analysis, you will realize that we are projecting the data onto some low dimensional service, but this is restrictive in the sense that those services are all linear. What if the best representation lies in some wirely shaped service? Principal component analysis will totally miss it. As you can see in this figure here, the data points are distributed in shape of Swiss roll 
principal component wouldn't work very well in this situation because it will look for a planner service to describe this data but the problem is that the planner service doesn't exist so we end up with some suboptimal representation of the data manifold learning solves this problem very efficiently how does we visualize it algorithms for this task are based on the idea that the dimensionality of many data sets is only artificially high although the data points may consist of thousands of meters they may be described as a function of only a few underlying parameters that is the data points are actually samples from a low dimension manifold that is embedded in a high dimensional space manifold learning algorithms attempt to uncover these parameters in order to find a low dimensional representation of the data there are a lot of approaches to solve this problem like isomap locally linear embedding lapalatian eigen maps semi definite embedding etc these algorithms work toward extracting the low dimensionality manifold dimensional manifold that can be used to describe the high dimensional data